What's going on YouTube? My name is Tom Davis aka Dark Transmissions and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm demonstrating for you how I draw the skeletal hand. This is the first of a two part video. The first part I'll be demonstrating the hand in the flat neutral position and that video is available right here on YouTube. In the second part I'm demonstrating the hand holding an object and that video is available over on my Patreon page. So head over to patreon.com forward slash dark transmissions and become a patron right now. It's only $5 per month and for that you get one monthly video as well as weekly content including progress updates on work that I'm creating, interactive content and every time I create an Instagram post announcing a new Patreon post I always give a shout out to all my beautiful patrons over there. So if you enjoy this video don't forget to hit subscribe, tap the notifications bell so you don't miss new content that's coming out. Leave a like and as always drop a comment down below to let me know what you thought of this video and if you've got any suggestions for videos you would like to see in the future. So with that being said guys, let's get into it. Alright guys, so for the purpose of demonstration, here's the equipment that I'm using. Uh, very simply, I'm just using printer paper, it's an A4 sheet folded in two to create this A5 sheet. Um, I'm using my Rotaring 600 0 0.5 pencil that I use for all of my sketching and I'm just using this simple stick rubber here uh, for any structural lines that I might want to get rid of later on just for clarity. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, drawing the skeletal hand, we're going to draw it flat like this uh, with this perspective, the thumb coming up this way. The fingers will be at rest here, not splayed out but not closed together, just at rest. Um, it's very simple to draw the skeletal hand, there's not that much to it until you start getting into grasping things, uh, but I will be covering that in my Patreon video today, so definitely head over to patreon.com forward slash dark transmissions, uh, sign up for my Patreon and you get access to that video. But for now we're just going to cover the hand in this position here for YouTube. So the way I draw hands or the method that I've come to know to draw hands or that I use to draw hands. Um, is especially when you're doing it like this just flat like that is the first thing you want to do is establish the height of the hand or, or I guess the length of the hand from the tip of the ring finger all the way down to the base of the palm uh, so how I'll do that is I'll start by drawing a vertical line straight down the page and then I'll put a dot at the top of it and the dot at the bottom of it and what that does is it tells me where the hand is, starts and ends all right very simple so then what I'll do is, remembering that the fingers are slightly longer than the palm, um, I'll come down to just below the halfway point and do a, a, an intersecting horizontal line here. Uh, if I carry that line across and then come out parallel to the center line and start bringing a line down on each side, tapering somewhat inwards, then you can see that we're starting to create the palm here as well. Uh, the bottom of the palm, the line doesn't come straight across, it somewhat arcs, so we will take note of that in our drawing here with a, with a little arcing line. Now, we're going to come to the knuckles now. Let me just bring this up a little bit higher, a bit more comfortable with it there. So we're going to come to the knuckles now. If you look at your own hand, you'll see that the knuckles kind of go in, this, in an arc up and then back down. The index finger is here. Then the line goes up to the middle finger slightly and then way back down through the ring finger to the little finger. So we'll observe that in our drawing as well. So let me just start on the, where the index finger is, come up to where the middle finger is and then back down through the ring finger to the little finger just like that. Then what I want to do is these two sections here on each side of the vertical line, I'm going to divide those in two again. And we have one section for the index finger, one section for the ring finger sorry, middle finger, ring finger, and little finger like that. Next, what I want to do is I want to establish where the fingers themselves are going to be. Uh, if you look at your own hand, you'll see that this, this arcing line here is continued upwards through the fingers. Um, but thing to notice is that when the lines are coming from the index finger to the ring, uh, middle finger, it's pretty much the same kind of distance as here. But coming back down to the ring finger, it becomes more extreme as the fingers go up. All right, so you'll see pretty much the same kind of um, angle on these lines, but then as it goes up, the angle to the ring to the little finger from the middle finger uh, becomes much more extreme. So we'll try and take note of that and observe that in our drawing as well. 
So let's come up an arbitrary distance here to create the first uh, part of the index finger, this part here, up to the ring finger, up to the center of the ring finger, and then back down to the little finger like that. And that's this section here. Then we'll come up here and create the second section and up to the middle finger and then back down to the little finger and then go up and do the fingertips up to, from the index finger up to the middle finger and back down again to the ring finger like that okay very simple uh, so like i said these fingers are not going to be splayed out or too much together they're just going to be at rest but we'll come back to the fingers in just a moment for now what i want to do is i want to start establishing the knuckles of the hand now, it's a stylistic choice of mine because I use skeletal hands a lot in my work. It's a stylistic choice of mine to have the knuckles joining each other. In reality, the knuckles would float somewhat apart from each other. There's space in here that is filled with, you know, veins and gristle and fat and all sorts of stuff going on. But in my work, I like to make these somewhat exaggerated bulbous knuckles that can meet each other. Let's do the same at the bottom. Okay, so these are balls. We're going to create a sort of a, a dumbbell effect here by drawing bars uh, that join these two balls. All right, just like this one line here and another line here. That's the index finger, so let's come to the middle finger. A line going up and down, ring finger. Line going up and down, and finally the little finger, shortest one of all. All right, so these are balls joining bars. Let's join them together here by creating these little arcing lines that sort of smoothly join the balls to the bars. Creates this kind of uh, dumbbell effect. All right, very simple. Now we're going to start establishing the fingers a little bit more. What I do is I start with the middle finger, come up to the center of the knuckle, right the way up, and then the index finger a little bit out, not, not, not straight up, a little bit out, the ring finger is a little bit out as well, just like the index, and then the little finger here is out as well. Now, these lines look like a complete mess right now, but as I establish these and build them up, you'll start to make a lot more sense out of them. Now, remember how we created the fingers on the back of the bones, or the, or the bones on the back of the hand, I should say, with balls joining bars. The individual bones of the fingers will be sideways discs joining bars, all right? So, I'll demonstrate very quickly. Now, I don't go through this process every time I create uh, a hand. But just for the sake of demonstration, it's handy for you to see. So I'm creating a sideways disc shape, or like a squashed circle, if you want, and then a bar that create that joins both of those together, like that. All right. Now we can smooth those out a little bit, and you see here you have the first part of the index finger. Carrying on up here uh, to the second part of the index finger, we'll do another disc and another disc. Now remember. See the width of this here? It gets thinner as it goes up. So that up here, it's way thinner. The finger tapers off or becomes thinner as it goes up. The bar is joining those two discs. And then one more for the tip of the finger. You don't need to do the disc in this one. You just do like a kind of an A shape almost. Imagine that was an A. And that's the tip of the finger. So that's the first finger, the index finger established. Now let's go ahead and start doing the ring finger with a, with the a disc or the squashed circle there another one up here and join those with a bar and then we'll do the middle section of the middle finger two discs joined by a bar and then the tip of the finger well we'll come back and define those a little bit later let's do the ring finger two discs joined by a bar two discs joined by a bar now it, again it's, this whole process is not something that I usually take part in when I draw because it would take way too long to draw a hand if I did this every single time. But the thing about it is, is that the more you practice it and the more you get used to the what a hand looks like, you can start to take away structural elements um, and you'll still be able to draw the hand perfectly well without having to set up all that structure. So you can start to see the fingers coming together. What I want to do now is I want to start establishing where the thumb is. Um, but before we can do that, what we need to do is down right down here at the bottom of the hand, uh, you'll see 
um, if you look at any anatomical books or anything, you'll see that there's a bunch of small sort of fragment bones down here. Now, I don't go for realism in my work. Realism is not something that I'm interested in. I just want to draw something that sort of vaguely looks like a skeleton hand and looks good in the process. I'm more interested in style than I am in realism. So, that being said, we still do need to make it look kind of like realistic almost. Or like it could function as a hand. So, down here I create a little bone, just like that. It's just a, it's just a fragment of a bone, remembering that it's sitting somewhat under these balls here so it's going to be tucked somewhat under them so a small one here under the ring finger and the uh, middle finger and the ring finger a much bigger one here for the ring finger to the middle finger and another small one sitting just under the index finger there we'll come down here and we'll create a couple more and these would eventually uh, they would join onto the wrist the, the, the bones in the arm the forearm but we're not worried about that right now Next thing I want to do is I want to put in the thumb. Now the thumb is much more difficult than the finger bones. Uh, if you if you look at the fingers the way they move, they move mostly inward, uh, out and, in and out like this. They splay and they close, or they they clench and they open like this. That's pretty much the only thing they can do, right? With relation to each other, they get a lot more difficult when you t when you start moving them like this. But individually, they're quite simple. The thumb now is a whole different story because the thumb can go in and out like that, it can go side to side and it can do circles, it has a lot more range of motion than the other fingers. So the thumb can be a lot more difficult for people to draw, especially when they're starting out. But I'm going to lay it out here for you in a very simple way and we're going to just use uh, relative measurement. And what I mean by relative measurement is we're going to look at where one thing is and we're going to look at where the other thing is relate in relation to that and we're going to make sure that it fits. For instance, the thumb here, the top of the thumb, if I draw a line straight up here, I can, I can hit the uh, first phalange of the, of the index finger like that. So when I'm drawing, I just make sure that that's the case. And if that's roughly close enough when I'm drawing, then the thumb is fine. I'm not too, I'm not too concerned about it being perfect, it just has to be close enough. So the first thing I do here is I come down to these little bones that I created here, uh, right in front of the bottom balls of the index and middle fingers. Uh, all these little bones in here would be all in here, right? I'm going to create another one that sits on top of those. That one is going to join the thumb to the rest of the hand, right? So let's go from the center of that and we'll draw a line up and out like this, right? It comes up and out, up and out, till about, say, there. So we'll start there and we'll end about there. And then we're going to do the next part that comes up like this, going up to about here. If I was to go from this line across, you'd meet the knuckle of the index finger. So as long as I'm able to meet the knuckle of the index finger, I know I'm, I'm on the right track. Now we're going to do the thumb, the tip of the thumb. comes up like this, and we can go from there to the first part of the index finger. That's what I mean by relative measurement. You're using other parts that you've already established to make sure that the new parts make sense. Let's flesh out the bones of the thumb now. This little uh, bone here, this little ball that joins the thumb to the rest of the hand, we are going to imagine that that sits somewhat below and behind the thumb bone. So let's come out here and start building up a thumb bone. And again, you could use the disc and bar method here if you want. And just join it up like that. Uh, let's do the next section of the thumb. And remember, as the thumb comes up, it comes somewhat towards you. So the bones are sitting on top of each other here, as well as, well, they're sitting on top of each other in, in, in the z-axis as well as the y-axis, if that makes any sense. So we've got these two in here, now let's do the tip of the thumb, like that, that's it, that's pretty much as simple as it gets. Now what I want to do is I want to start kind of tidying it up and fleshing it out a little bit here. And the best thing that I could say to you at this point is, once you have the structure of the hand down, and once you understand how the hand is structured, uh, the bones of the hand, then you can start to like, uh, you know, play around with it and start adding your own style to it, you know. But for just for the moment, we're going to make sure that it looks like a proper bony hand. Let's go ahead and flesh out the middle finger joining those squashed discs to the bar making sure that it makes sense 
and it looks well readable. Same with the ring finger. And you can copy me line for line here because all I'm doing is a basic structure. There's not a whole lot of style gone into this. It's just basic structure. So if you watch this video over and over again and draw at the same time, copying me line for line, then at a certain point in the future, you will have, you will just have an, an innate or second nature understanding of how all of these different parts of the hand work. And then you won't need this video anymore because all you will be concerned with then is your stylistic approach or making the hand look like uh, like something that was drawn by you and nobody else. Let's go in here and just define these bones down here. And again, I'm not going for realism. I'm just going for something that looks like a skeleton hand but is more stylistic than anything else. And I can take away these lines here. You know, and you can start to see how the hand comes together. Oop. And that's the basic sort of idea of how to draw the skeletal hand. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And if you want to see another video on the skeleton hand uh, grasping objects, which is far more technical, there's a whole lot more that you can do when, once you start to hold objects and grasp objects. If you want to see a video of me demonstrating how to draw hands doing that, then head over to patreon.com forward slash dark transmissions or just hit the uh, link in the description down below and you can check out that video. It's only $5 per month. You get access to that video and a whole lot more content. So it's definitely well worth it if you want to learn more about how to draw uh, the skeletal hand. Because once you know how to draw the skeleton hand, then you pretty much know how to draw a hand with flesh on it. It's the exact same thing. Um, so I hope you enjoy that video and uh, we're going to leave it at that. Thanks. So there you have it guys. That's my demonstration of how I draw the skeletal hand in the flat neutral position. I hope you enjoyed the video and like I said at the start, if you did, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you'll see new content when it comes out. Leave a like and drop a comment down below to let me know what you thought of the video. As I said before as well, this is only the first of a two part video. The second part in which I demonstrate how to draw the skeletal hand grasping an object is available only over on my Patreon page. So head over to patreon.com forward slash dark transmissions or just tap in the link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, my friends, and you have an amazing day. Peace.